Okay, let's do some proof for fun. Here we are going to prove that if f is a continuous function, then we have a double integral, huh? Okay, the first integral in black from 0 to x, and then the second integral in blue from 0 to u, and then inside here we have f of t dt, and then we have the du. And we want to show that it's equal to the integral from 0 to x, f of u, times x minus u, and then du. Wow, we have a lot of integrals, huh? And we are going to do this from a theoretical approach because we don't have an actual function to work with. And if you would like, you can just think about, okay, let f of t equals to t squared, and then you can actually work it out. And you will see that the left-hand side will be indeed equal to the right-hand side. But I will leave that to you guys. Okay, now, we do have a lot of integrals, and sometimes we don't want that. Hmm, how can we kill integrals? Well, by differentiating, right? Well, can we just differentiate this legitimately? And here is the most important part when you're doing proof. You are going to look at what do you have as an assumption. Here we are saying that f is a continuous function. And the truth is, if you know f is a continuous function, well, this right here will be continuous. And of course, this right here, f is a continuous function times x minus another variable like this, like this just dumb variable. This will also be continuous. So the inputs, okay, they are continuous. And when you have a little f is continuous, how can we differentiate with an integral? We can use ftc1, fundamental theorem of calculus 1. No, I mean, fundamental theorem of calculus part 1, not calculus 1 as a class, but part 1 of the fundamental theorem of calculus. And let me write it down for you guys, okay? So, in fact, we don't have to get into any Cal3 material. I will just show you guys how we can handle a double integral by using the Calc 1 technique. The fundamental theorem of calculus part 1, which basically saying that if f is a continuous function, then we will have the following. If you want to differentiate d dx like this of an integral function in the sense of from 0 to x, and in fact, it can be any constant right here. So I will show, put down a. And right here is f, and you can use any variable that you would like. This right here is just a dummy variable for the integral function like this. You can use t, you can use u, you can use whatever. Let me use u like this, and then du, okay? And seriously, you can use w if you would like as well. But anyway, differentiating an integral like this, it's really easy. All you have to do is just plugging x into this right here as the new input, that's all. A quick idea is that imagine if you actually integrate this, which you have to find an antiderivative, right? And then if you differentiate an antiderivative, you pretty much will get uh, the original function back. But earlier when you found the antiderivative, you had to plug in x, right? So you, you have the x as a new input. So that's the, pretty much the idea. This right here is just equal to f, okay, of this right here goes in here. So we have the x now, like that, okay? And sometimes there may be some difficult version of this because maybe you have like a constant to, let's say, x squared. In that case, don't forget when you differentiate, you have to use chain rule. But in this case right here, these integrals are pretty innocent, so we don't have to worry about it. So now, I'm going to use this concept here to help us out, to kill some integral first. So I will differentiate the left-hand side first, okay? So let's differentiate the dx, this integral, which is the integral from 0 to x, and then from 0 to u, and then f of t dt, and then over here, we have the du like this. Okay, now, earlier, you see, we have the integral a can be any constant to x like this, right? So, of course, that's what we have right here as well. And as I said, du, okay, just the du right here. All we did was look at what this is and then plugging x into the input, and that's a new input. So now, we just have to pay attention to what this is. And once again, this is a function, and it's continuous, okay? Because f of t is continuous. When you integrate that to well, the integral function, the area function is also continuous. Well, I have to plug in x into what variable? Think about it. Now, here's the deal. The idea is that if you actually integrate this, which you have to find an antiderivative for this, right? And then you have to plug in u 
into the antiderivative. So u is the input. And then when you plug in x into the input of this function, you see, u was the input. You have to plug in x into the u. That's all. So this right here is equal to the integral in blue, okay? Now we just have the blue. This is just like the function here. And this stays the same, 0. But the input was u. Now it's going to become x. And then the rest will stay the same. And this is just a function. So that's what we have on the left-hand side, okay? And as I said, if you want to really understand this, if you want to convince yourself, you can just say f of t is equal to t squared or whatsoever, and actually work it out. And you will see that it will work out nicely. Okay, so that's the left-hand side. Now, moving on to the right-hand side. Let's differentiate this guy as well. That's the dx of this guy, which is the integral from 0 to x. Hmm. Okay, now you see, this right here, this is f of u. So this is the function times x minus u. So you should distribute, okay? So I'm going to write this down as x times f of u, like this, and then minus, and we will have u times that, u times f of u. And this is in the u world, the u like that. And I should put down a big parenthesis like this. It is kind of trickier, okay? And let's write it down carefully. So I will be differentiating. Now pay really close attention to what variable is what. This integral is in the u world for now, right? Okay, I'm going to split this into two integrals. In the u world, x doesn't matter. You can actually put it outside. So I can take the x out. Okay, because we're in the u world. And then this is the integral from 0 to x, f of u, du. Once again, this is a function in terms of x, right? In the end, you get x. And it's x times this function. And then we will have minus. Okay, these two things, they are both in terms of u, so we have to make it stay. So we will just have the integral from 0 to x u times f of u, like that. And this is still in the u world. Okay, now, let's go ahead and differentiate this guy. This is x times a function in terms of x. Therefore, we have to use the product rule. And the product rule I want to use is, I will keep the first function as how it is, and I will differentiate the second function. And how do we differentiate this? This is an integral function. Well, all we have to do is, Plugging x into this input by ftc1. Plugging x into the u. That's all we have to do. So here, we pretty much will just get that, right? So in another word, we will have f of x. Plugging x into u and no more integral, right? So once again, this is the derivative of that. Now, I will have to add the second function, which is this integral. So namely, from 0 to x f of u, this is u, f of u, du, times the derivative of x, which is just nicely equal to 1. Now, continue, that's minus. Okay, I'm going to differentiate this integral function, so we have the 0 to x, just like that. Well, here is the input, the integrat, I should say. Well, I have to plug in x into here and here. I don't need to use a product rule here because this is not product of two functions. All we have to do is ftc1 plugging this into the inputs of the integrand. In another word, I will just get x times f of x. That's all. And then you see that this and that cancel each other out nicely, right? Because x times f of x minus x times f of x is just zero. So in the end, you see that this is just the integral from 0 to x, f of u, du. Okay, cool so far, right? Now, what is the connection? Well, on the left-hand side, when we differentiate this guy, we see that we get, just get this. On the right-hand side, when we differentiate this guy, we get that. The input is just f. And here, even though we have t, but here we have u, these are just the dominant variables. If you imagine, if you have area, don't forget, we go from 0 to x. 
go from 0 to x. In the end, you actually have the same area. Don't let the dummy variable bother you. OK, now, the derivative of the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal. What does that mean? Well, let me just put down a note on the side for you guys. If we know that, let's say we have two functions, f and g, OK? If the derivative are equal to each other, then what can we say? Can we say that the original functions are equal to each other? No. They are off by a constant. OK? So we can only say that, OK, fine. f is equal to g, but off by a constant. So I just need to add some number c like that. OK? We have to just put down plus c. And if we are lucky enough to show c is equal to 0, then we can say that f is equal to g. Now, because of this, OK, how can we figure out the constant? Well, let's just try to figure this out by selecting some x values. And hopefully, we can argue it that c is equal to 0. So I will choose the nice value for x. And because we're going from 0 to x, this is 0. So what other number is easier than x being equal to 0, right? So now, we are talking about the left-hand side is the integral from 0 to 0. And this is equal to, and I also have to plug in 0 in here, right? So this is from 0 to 0, and this is. Nicely enough, this right here is equal to 0. Nicely enough, this right here is equal to 0 because you are going from 0 to 0, right? So don't that take care of that. So 0 is equal to 0 plus c. Of course, c is equal to 0. So finally, you see that, aha, the left-hand side is indeed equal to the right-hand side because c is equal to 0. So. Uh, I will just write this down. I will just put down. Thus, this is done. Of course, the best thing to do when you're doing a proof is to put a box and then shade it in. This is so cool, isn't it? Yeah, let me know if you guys like this. And if you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe. I like to make math videos to share with my viewers. And as always, that's it.